Welcome to the High Volume Hiring Podcast. I'm Stephen Rothberg, the founder of job search site College Recruiter. We believe that every student and recent grad deserves a great career. This podcast features news, tips, case studies, and interviews with the world's leading experts about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to high volume hiring. Thanks for joining us. Today's guest is my friend, Peter Weddle, the CEO of TA Tech, the trade association for the worldwide community of organizations that provide technology-based tools for recruiting. Peter, welcome to the show. Hi, Stephen. It's great to be here. Awesome to see you again and to be with you. Hey, um, Peter, for the listeners who might not know that much about you or TA Tech, maybe take a minute or two and tell them kind of like, where you came from, what your career path was, and uh, also maybe a favorite horror story. <laughs> well, there's so <laughs> many to pick from. Um, <laughs> I I, uh, I guess it all began back in the uh, in the early '90s, kind of date me. I, I sold a company that was pre-web, but arguably one of the largest in the country that was using computers to match people in jobs. And I sold it mm-hmm. to Ethereum. And I was looking around for my next gig, and I landed the opportunity to write a uh, biweekly column for the Wall Street Journal on this new thing called the Internet, Um, (laughs) in in, in particular, the employment space. So I uh, had the good fortune to be able to look over the shoulder of all the early entrepreneurs in the uh, talent technology field from the early job boards, the early talent marketplaces, the early aggregators, and then increasingly artificial intelligence and programmatic ad buying and so forth. Um, and uh, I did that until Murdoch bought uh, News Corp, uh, or bought Dow Jones, excuse me. And uh, at that point, it just seemed to me that the industry had matured enough uh, that it deserved a trade organization. So I founded TA Tech. Awesome. And the original name for TA Tech, International Association of Employment Websites, I kind of got the feeling that it was like a Wheel of Fortune competition and that you didn't have to buy any vowels. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the the acronym sounded like the International Brotherhood of Plumbers. Oh uh, yes, I, I I I grant you, but uh, you know, we, at that point we were still casting about it uh, to to figure out what we were going to call this crazy new field. Um, uh, it did land on talent technology, hardly original, but uh, you know, it, it seemed to me that the the people who were in the business of using technology to solve talent acquisition challenges and problems uh you know they deserved a handle hr tech had been around for years they deserved yep. their own specific handle so we created ta tech yeah and uh, ta tech does is is a really great much shorter way of describing it rolls off the tongue uh, i think everybody knows what 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 you're referring to so um it was it was a really good name change and and you're right it's organizations like the company that that i founded college recruiter yeah we fit into hr tech but more specifically we fit into into ta tech so it's sort of it's it's a much more um it better aligns with what we do what are some of the other kinds of organizations that that belong to ta tech other than job boards well uh more recently, we've had a lot of uh, new members in programmatic ad buying platforms, conversational AI and chatbot solutions, CRM platforms, recruitment marketing companies. Uh, we've always had a presence uh, in the uh, ATS segment of the market. So virtually any uh, organization principally companies, but also associations in some cases that use technology to provide a product or service for employers. Hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, man, that really runs the gamut. There, there are uh, right, assessments, ATS, chatbots. Um, there, there's so many that fit into that. Yeah. And, and now we're pushing the envelope. We're looking at blockchain and web three and, and, uh, you know, really new kinds of, uh, new kinds of technology altogether. So uh, it's never a dull moment. Yeah. I- anybody who says that there's no um, improvement or evolution in this space, they, 
all they have to do is just come to one of your conferences and I think they'll be floored within about the first 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, a mutual um, friend, somebody that I greatly admire, somebody that I know you've worked with a lot over the years, Madeline Lurano, um, um, published some some work recently for her company, Aptitude Research, that, boy, there was a statistic in there that I kind of looked at it and was like, seriously? Um, but she said something to the effect of that 48% of recruiters are satisfied with their talent technology stack. Um, so, you know, a slight majority are not satisfied with their own tech stack. What's going on? Why do you think that is? Well, there are, you know, a host of factors, but I think two are most important. Uh, and they sort of focus on the beginning and the middle uh, of the buying process, if you will. In the beginning, uh, oftentimes uh, companies don't have a clear goal in mind. Why are we buying this technology? What are we trying to accomplish? What KPIs are we trying to achieve? What problem are we trying to solve? And if they don't have that clear goal in the beginning, people are going to be disappointed when it comes on board because it's not going to do what they expected it to do. Uh, but the other problem, and I think probably the more uh, significant one, uh, is problems with implementation. Uh, there was some research done by Forbes, which found that the dirty little secret of the IT department is that 50% of IT projects fail. So we look at these people in the IT department and we think, oh, these guys are, you know, tech gods. They really understand how to make this stuff work. And in point of fact, you know, they're human and they, they get it wrong half of the time. And the research revealed that when you probed the causes for implementation failures, only 3% of the time was the cause a, a technology deficiency, a problem with the product. 97% of the time, the problem was with the implementation process, the way it was brought into the organization, the way the organization prepared for uh, and introduced it to the staff involved, the policies and procedures that might have been affected and so forth. We'll be back right after this break. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about, and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so. Welcome back to the High Volume Hiring Podcast. So, you mean you know you know my wife well, Faith Rothberg, and uh, she's the CEO of College Recruiter. She comes from a technology background. She graduated. Um, from college. She worked as a computer programmer for Ford. Um, she was uh, in a management information systems consultant for KPMG. And what she has told me many, many times over the years, aside from I need to bring her flowers more often, is that she is that she asked me to remind you. She asked me to remind you as well that uh, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it actually has been a few weeks, so I suppose I'm going to have to get on that. The um, but she one of the things that she really helped me see is that is that IT is one of those fields where you have to be perfect every time. That there's there's no there's no room for error. Um, sales, business development, customer support, you can make mistakes and then make up for them. And just you know, apologize, make make good, and whatever. But you have any errors in IT, and it's just kind of unthinkable. Um, and I know that the developers who work for us, and the the tech folks, um, people who work with technologists uh, that are listening to this, w would agree that man, if there are a hundred steps to implementing a new technology solution, you have to get every single one of them right. In, in order for that to work. So I guess I'm not really all that surprised at, at that 97% number. Um, so if implementation of talent technology is, is so difficult, is such a problem, um, what do you suggest that 
recruiting teams do to address that? I, I think it's important to be thinking about implementation from the very beginning. When you when you make a decision that you're going to acquire a piece of technology, uh, you you want to not just focus on writing the RFP and 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 vetting all the solution providers and finally picking the company that's going to be involved. You want to be thinking about what what impact will this new product have on our policies, on our procedures, on our processes, on the, the skills and knowledge of the people involved, and not just recruiters, by the way, but also by recruiters' customers, those hiring managers that they're serving. So uh, you, you really want to know the impacts uh, as best you can up front. And then you want to understand who's going to be your champions uh, in the organization, uh, and also who are going to be your resistors so that you can deal you can deal with those folks in a timely and effective way. And is that something that the recruiting teams should primarily be doing internally? Is that something that the vendors need to do a better job with? You know, if if they're talking to if if the TA folks are talking to an ATS company, um, a, a, a chatbot company, a job board, whatever. Is that something that they should say to the vendor? The vendor needs to do a better job with that? Is that fall more within the talent acquisition group? Is that both? Where where do you see that that extra layer laying? So I think maybe the best way to to approach it is to use what I call the wedding tradition. You want to invite everybody to the party. Uh, uh, and uh, what that means is that, yes, of course, the solution provider has to be involved, but the solution provider is really all about making sure that their product works. So they're going to help with the integration into the tech stack as best they can. They're going to work with the IT uh, team as best they can. But there are huge aspects of a new technology coming into a recruiting organization that they are not able to to really deal with and we've we've mentioned several of them already so oftentimes a a new uh, piece of talent technology is an exercise in change management you know what what parts of the process are going to be changed what parts of the procedure what changes will there be in procedures and even it is po possible that there might be some changes in policy. So you've got to really get everybody who's going to be involved on that project team and talking to each other. And the sooner that you do that, the better. I mean, we, we've, we've been working on a handbook and, and uh, we've been, uh, we've been blessed to have some contributions from senior level uh, talent acquisition executives. And one of the things that they pointed out was that, it's very important to have the compliance team involved from the very beginning. Now, that's not somebody you would typically think about in a, you know, a new technology acquisition, but you want to make sure that the compliance team is represented not only on the acquisition part, to make sure that the product coming in in no way uh, upsets, derails, interferes with the company's DE&I goals, but also that the, its implementation lives up to any representations that were made about what the product can or cannot do with regard to compliance. You mentioned DEI. I can absolutely see how from a compliance standpoint, there, there are some real hot button issues there. We want to make sure we do this and not that. Um, I think another example would be privacy. With the plethora of privacy laws that, that have already been enacted globally, that are going to be enacted globally, uh, it astounds me how many organizations are turning a blind eye to that with the vendors they're choosing. And you're, you're liable for what your vendors do. You know, if, if you're, if you're going to implement an ATS that does not hold the data in a way that's compliant with the privacy laws in an area of Brazil, and you're hiring people in that area, you've got some problems. Um, and I think that the compliance folks that you're talking about would just, their, their whole orientation to how they get their work done to the issues they're looking for, they're going to be looking for those issues. I can certainly see why why a TA leader might not want to bring in the compliance people because they might not want to get that answer. 
uh, be sort of willfully <laughs> ignorant is that um, I, I would imagine that you've run across some of some instances like that where where it's kind of like if I close my eyes to the problem, the problem doesn't exist. Well, I think you can look at it this way. If you get the compliance experts involved in the beginning, you're less likely to have to rely on the lawyers later on in the yeah. uh, in the process. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is absolutely true. Um, you know, but I think before you and I knew each other, um, I um, I graduated from law school. I was actually still still in law school. I was working for um, a Fortune 50 company, uh, Honeywell. And I was working in their HR legal office. And uh, just you mentioning getting the lawyers involved kind of like towards the end of the process, I can't tell you how many times we would have conversations like that. Like if the HR person had come to us and said, can I do A or B? And we would have said, you can absolutely do B. And here's how you do it. And we've done this 50 different times. For the love of God, don't do A. <laughs> <laughs> and so promptly, you know, what happens when they didn't consult is that they did A. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a lot harder to clean up a mess than to avoid a mess in the first place. Right. And, and a lot of times, yeah, it's a lot of times it's sort of a six of one half of a dozen or another. It's like we could do A or B doesn't really matter. And just not because they're trying to break the law or create a problem, but it's just they haven't been down that path before. I think a lot of recruiting leaders that maybe were in, say, I don't know, uh, uh, an organization that's like a, in retail or hospitality and highly successful there, and then they go over to, say, healthcare or financial services, highly regulated industries, they just don't know of of the of the problems that they might encounter and so they accidentally uh get into those um well you know be, before we run out of time um on this um I, I what i'd love for you to do is to give the listeners a, a little bit of a, a peek around the corner um i've been to boy at least a dozen um, of the events dating right back almost to the to, to the beginning of the association. Um, and I know you've got a, a big one coming up in May. So maybe you can let the listeners know if they want more information on Peter Weddle, on TA Tech, on the, the conference in, in May in Austin, how they should do that. Well, thank you for asking that. Um, our, our event uh, coming up in May uh, in Austin is called TA Tech North America and the World Job Board Forum. Um, and uh, it's described on our website, tatech.org forward slash events. And we're also doing a similar major market conference in Europe, TA Tech Europe and the EMEA Job Board Forum in London uh, in November. So uh, if you can, uh, if you're interested in business in the North American market, the conference in May is sort of the place to be. If you're interested in the European or EMEA market, the the event in November is probably where you want to be. Oh, that that is fantastic. College Recruiter will for sure be at the North American one. Um, and I suspect we'll probably also be at the European one, and, and, and hopefully it'll be me personally in one of those seats. Um, for people who want to uh, contact you, um, how should they do that? Well, uh, they could, they're welcome to contact me by email. My email address is Peter Weddle, my first and last name. My last name is spelled W-E-D-D-L-E at TATech.org. Fantastic. Peter, it has been great sharing a little bit of time with you and look forward to seeing you hopefully in the spring. Stephen, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it as well and give my best to faith. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us today on the High Volume Hiring Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Rothberg of job search site College Recruiter. Each year, we help more than 12 million candidates find great new jobs. Our customers are primarily Fortune 1000 companies, government agencies, and other employers who hire at scale and advertise their jobs with us. You can reach me at stephen at collegerecruiter.com. The High Volume Hiring Podcast is a co-production of Evergreen Podcasts and College Recruiter. Please subscribe for free on your favorite app. Review it. Five stars are always nice. And recommend it to a couple of people you know who want to learn more about how best to hire at scale. 
Cheers. Hi, my name is Sara, and I want to tell you about my podcast called Can I Offer You Some Feedback? I'm a business consultant and executive coach with over 20 years experience in change management, leadership development, and naturally providing feedback to high performers. My podcast is for those of you who have a complicated relationship with feedback, whether giving, receiving, avoiding, or seeking. Feedback is essential for our development. In each episode, you'll hear from real people across industries with their ideas, perspectives, and best practices on feedback. I'll also be sharing business bites with you, simple explanations of organizational tools, management techniques, and leadership philosophies that will help you and your businesses thrive. You can listen to Can I Offer You Some Feedback on your favorite podcast app or learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com.